How awesome is this? You! Am I saying that right? It could be more staccato. Be you! A little quick one. You! Okay. So it's like when you're in the water and there's a big wave coming, you go you! And like tell people to look. Or if you're about to drop in on a wave and someone's there, you yell you! You can yeah. use it in many different ways. Good or bad. Good How are you that. doing? Huh? <laughs> I built a camera cart in the back. Oh, half nice. camping, half oh, camera cart. Oh, that is so sick. I've been building camera. <laughs> What? On this, and it's perfect. Capri Sun, anybody? Oh, no. oh. You know what? Forget about making this video about the Komodo. Let's no. just like <laughs> geek out on this. Let's do a truck tour. Truck. When it's time to take a little nap. This is cool. When's the last time you saw a two door G Wagon? So it's in here, huh? The entire yeah. camera package, map box filters, cinema lens, everything is in there. And it's waterproof, right? Water yeah, don't test it. I know where you're going with oh, that. They want to see it. Are you going to let all of them down? Comment below if you want to see me throw my Komodo over the edge. So, <laughs> me, I'm not going to lie, it makes me nervous opening this on a dock on with holes in here. But I mean, hey, anything for the video, right? <laughs> this is my camera case. Airy Alter Prime. Man, this thing feels... And they're so, they're so gorgeous. It just looks amazing no matter what you're pointing it at. And here it is, the Komodo. Man, every time I see this, I'm shocked at how small this is. So what was the biggest selling point of the Komodo for you? I was always almost buying a cinema camera. In my directing career, I always rent. It would either be a red, like I shot music videos with Katy Perry on the red one, like back in the day. And then I started shooting a bunch of stuff for CoverGirl and it was like, we would rent the Alexa and it would always be back and forth. And I was always like, I'm working a lot. Maybe I should buy a camera. I've been a fan of Red for a long time. And when they announced that they were doing a tiny body for relatively cheap, it was almost a no brainer because I was almost there for years. And so just having a cheaper camera was like enough to just push me over the edge. I mean, there's so many cool things about this camera. One being so small, two being the red color science, but the other super crazy benefit is it having a global shutter. Kind of unheard of even amongst cinema cameras. Yeah, you don't have to worry at all about rolling shutter. No rolling That's shutter, good. no wobbly lines, no jello buildings or anything like that on the fast pans. These two batteries, you can hot swap these batteries. So they take these uh, Canon BP batteries. And so you'd never have to power down the camera. You could just hot swap the batteries out. I have a little mount that you can put a V mount on here. I heard that the battery consumption on this is really, really good. They'll go forever. It's pretty crazy. I have these big Anton Bauer batteries and the time remaining on one of the batteries is like six and a half, seven hours, like just for the camera, which is insane. What? Yeah, it'll last forever. Like our red has a 150 watt hour red brick V mount battery and just destroys Shoot through that. Through them, right? yeah. This will last forever. Six and a half hours on that same battery. How did they do that? I have like, no idea. Yeah, are these harder to find now because the Komodo They're, they're uses? all sold out everywhere. Yeah, that's yeah, what I Yeah, I, I managed to get two like early and then it was like impossible to get. I believe these were used for like the C100 Mark IIs and oh, wow, those. Okay. So they're not used in the latest Canons, which oh, is wow, probably okay. why they're harder to find. Yeah, but it's a solid battery. I mean, this little thing right here is holding 55 watt hours. So we do have a 3.5 mil TRS and headphone and CFast, right? Yeah, we have the SDI out back here as well. Other super cool thing about this camera, this having this Wi-Fi transmit that gives you full control over an iPad or a phone. You have streaming, so it's like you can monitor, you can change any setting, which is insane. Just built right in. That is crazy that you can fit an entire complete kit inside of one of these cases. With our red, this whole case would be just taken up by the body and like the basic essentials that the camera itself needs. Yeah. But here you've got lens, batteries, microphone, map box, and filters. What? It's the quintessential travel cinema kit now. You know what I mean? It's like everything can fit right in here. Throw this in your overhead take off to Nepal, shoot a video. Why don't we build it and you can try it out for yourself. Oh, let's do it. This is kind of how I've been shooting with it as of late. What I noticed about the Komodo is that after you get the body, you really don't need a bunch of accessories. Obviously you need a battery and a lens, but what's cool is that you can go ahead and start recording with just that, opposed to you know the prior DSMCs, we got our brain, but then you had to get accessories. You had to buy the red mags, and then you had to buy the red bag reader. There's a lot of things that was required of the camera. So it wasn't a matter of, do you want accessories? It was, which accessories do you want? And you easily double the price of the camera by the time you have it ready to go. But here you buy the camera, you get the batteries from Canon and you get the CFast card from wherever. You know, you don't need much to shoot with this. And in addition, you can build it really, really small. I've built this one out quite a bit. But considering that this is rigged out with a V-mount battery, so this is gonna last you a long time. You can slap a big CFast card. You're running with a red sensor and an Airy Ultra Prime 
in a kit this this is nuts this is a huge build for the komodo it's still relatively small this was designed to be a crash cam right yeah that's that's also the interesting thing that's why they built this camera was to put it in cars and whatever else that you were gonna explode essentially. Feature films were using GoPros and it's just like the quality was not quite cutting it when you're, you have master primes on an Air Alexa as first unit, right? So they wanted to build a camera that was small that could be relatively inexpensive because you might break it, but then all of the content creators and basically everybody else that has been interested in RED, myself included, was like, Wait, why don't you just use that for like a normal camera? This is exactly what happened with the Alexa Mini, right? Yeah, the Mini yeah. is still pretty big, but they designed it to be a gimbal or a drone camera. But then everyone was like, it's small and it has the Alexa sensor. It gives me the look I want out of it. So everyone started shooting on Alexa Minis. It's exactly that, like build a small camera and everybody's like, I'm just gonna use the small one that takes less power and is lighter, <laughs> you know what I mean? We're getting a red image with airy ultra primes it's something this small. This is blowing my mind. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start recording my very first clip on here. Oh, this is looking nice. I'm digging these ultra primes. We're getting the high-end version of this camera by putting some good cinema glass on there yeah. for sure. So I see that I'm recording 6K in the R3D, which I love, by the way. I love Red's raw codec because one, it's very powerful, but at the same time, it's very easy to work with and there's plenty of workflow methods out there. So no matter what post house you give it to, they're like, oh yeah, we worked with this before. And even for these YouTube videos, I could just take these raw files, drop it straight into Premiere and edit it kind of like I would out of this A7S. Of the RED files is really surprising to me because this is the first RED that I've owned. I've edited stuff with RED, but it's like definitely have never shot this much volume and you just drop it in and it's like, it works great, retains all the information on the image when you're coloring it. I was a fan before, like just shooting as a director on RED, but now as an owner, operator, user, I'm like even more sold, I love it. Yeah, because the 6K RAW, we'll probably be able to just edit this on our laptop without having to get proxies. I mean, obviously proxies are gonna be easier, but for this video that you're watching, we probably didn't make proxies. We probably just dragged and dropped it into the timeline. Now I see MQ, what is that? So MQ is RED's compression method for the Komodo. They changed it a little bit. They used to have the number system, which was informative, you know, okay, if I'm 10 to one, I'm 10 times compression from like uncompressed, right? But on this one, they simplified it, just LQ, MQ, HQ, low, medium, high, just varying bit rates. Have you shot a lot of slow motion on that? I haven't shot a lot, but I have played around with it. In order to shoot higher frame rates, you have to crop in, because I guess there's a, some sort of a data limit. So if you're taking all the information from the whole frame, you can only go so fast, which is 40 frames a second at 6K. If you take a smaller portion of that frame, you can go faster. 4K, you shoot 60. Smaller size of the sensor, 2K, you can go up to 120 frames a second. When you lower the resolution, it doesn't resample the whole sensor. It actually just does crop in. So if we are shooting in HD, the downside of that is that we're really cropped into that sensor. So we're set at 120 frames per second now. So we are in 2K. I'm at a 24, so it should be a wide angle lens, but it feels more like a telephoto here because of that crop. You know, I must say though, I'm a little disappointed. I thought that when I would see you, you would be very glamorous. There's something missing. Uh, something's missing. Hmm, I, I think maybe I know what it is. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Stop, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> Stop filming me. I definitely think if you shoot a lot of slow-mo, it's worth having some ultra wide lenses oh, because yeah, it does yeah, yeah. feel tight even at this 24. Now, Fujinon's loaning these to us. Now, these might be very popular lenses for that Komodo because these have been converted by Duclos lenses to be an RF mount. But pretty cool, right? Natively RF. And honestly, it's, it's pretty lightweight, feel this. Oh, that's crazy. These are super light. Now, Fujinon's been known to make some killer zoom lenses like the 19 to 90 Cabrio. Also, the Aloras, really great glass. But it's kind of cool to see them making some budget-friendly lenses. Well, 
budget friendly if you compare it to cinema lenses. But check it out, T29, 18 to 55, and we have 50 to 135. You could shoot a whole project on these two lenses right here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is Super 35, so it wouldn't work on full frame sensors, which can be a little bit of a downside, but if you're talking about using a Komodo, you're going Super 35 anyways. Yeah, I feel like this is gonna be super popular amongst the Komodo users. Having it be native RF, you don't have to deal with the adapter. Check this out, there's a macro switch Yeah, I just here. noticed that. So you can go macro on 130, we should test that out for sure. So you pull this down and you turn it, and I'm gonna assume that puts this lens into macro mode. Can we throw these on the Komodo? Let's do it. It's kinda nice because you can clamp on a matte box on here, of course, but you also have the option to be lazy and just thread on an 82 mil filter. Be quick, be quick. not lazy, yes. be quick. This is a powerful setup right now, and look how small it is. It's so light too. I mean, again, I, I feel like you think this is gonna be top heavy, uh, but it feels great. You have the full versatility of an 18 to 55, and the image is great. Sam posting up, chilling. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'd, I'd be excited to put this lens like actually through its paces, but I mean, first glances, I mean, it looks great. What cameras do you think that this Komodo competes against? I would have a different answer like four weeks ago before the C70 came out. That is really gonna be its biggest competitor, I think, because that's also RF now and Super 35. I think the people that are after the Komodo are people that have, it's not their first camera. They've had Sony mirrorless or Canon. They've shot content for a while. And I think this is pulling the people that are like, they wanna make the next jump. That's my impression. I'm racking focus to infinity up to close. Very little, if any, breathing. That's always nice, right? And it's also great that you can lock in focus here and then zoom out and we still maintain focus. Three, two, one, action. We are testing out the 50 to 135 now. Oh, Sam's giving us all the looks. Yeah, this looks nice. T2.9, 135. All right, we're gonna get a nice close-up of Sam's mustache that he's trying to grow. You need some good macro to really see it. Feelings are hurt. This is as close as it gets. We're at minimum focus at 135. And that's actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is that your chip tooth? Yeah. <laughs> I get you at the Thailand. With EF lenses, we have a little bit of autofocus, right? We do. That is a feature that I've never tested out on this camera, so I have no idea how well it's gonna work. I hear it's really good. But there is no autofocus with RF lenses. There isn't yet. I don't know if there is going to be. I don't know what the deal is, but it seems sort of weird that they only do it with EF, but that's just the case. All right, let's try this out. So all this here is purely autofocus. I have it so that it's centered. And let's see if I pull the focus to the background. There's that. Smooth. That got it. Back to Sam. Now, do you know if they're gonna do any sort of like face tracking? Even in the menu, it still says beta. So there's clearly going to be more additions, more things coming. Honestly, this is better autofocus than I was expecting. Cause it's Red's first autofocus camera. So I was honestly you expecting it to be, be pretty <laughs> bad. Now there's gonna be a lot of updates coming for sure. Now in this version, which is still beta by the way, it's not letting me autofocus at 2K 120 frames per second but that might be because it's so cropped into the sensor. I could do 6K at 40 frames per second. So let me go ahead and try to get a few shots here. There's no like face tracking features just yet. So it's just whatever's in the center. Like it's very confident in what it's focusing on. If I put something in the center of the frame, it does focus on it. This is 5K. 48 frames per second. Again, autofocus is pretty solid here. Go into the background, go into Sam. It knows which direction to go. It doesn't really hunt. Because of the fact that it can't detect faces and you know track, it makes it not as functional as you know some of the better autofocus systems. But when you tell it to focus in the center, it's very confident in where it's focusing. If you're aware of that, you can get this to give you really good results. Like just knowing what you have to do and it's not like you can fly the camera around and it's gonna figure it out. If you're pointing it where you wanna point it, it'll find focus and that shot will be good. And I do like this overall menu. It's very easy to use this menu system. How do you think this thing will handle on a gimbal with the autofocus? I don't know, I feel like there's only one way to find out. We have the two new DJI gimbals here, the RS2 and the RSC2. I'm kind of curious with that smaller lens if we could just put it on the smaller, more compact RSC2. Like I bet you if you fiddle with it enough, you could probably get it to work on here, but it does feel a little bit small. Payload wise, you're fine, but I think the issue is that you're gonna run into a little bit of clearance issues right back there. So if you have a Komodo, like you could probably make it work on here, but you should probably just go to the bigger RS2. Just go to the big boy. So now we have it on the RS2 and it balances no problem. You can just tap the screen to decide where you want the focus to go. This is kind of cool. We've done a lot of filming with a red on a gimbal and it is easily a two to three person job. I can do this move right here 
And is the autofocus good enough? Yeah. <laughs> like it would help a lot if I had the autofocus tracking because yeah. I'm trying to keep you perfectly centered for the autofocus. You're just saying you just have to be a better gimbal operator. That's what you're saying. Shut up. <laughs> Stop making fun of me. This is crazy to think I'm using autofocus on a red. On a single-handed operated gimbal. We're not even doing the coolest thing. We can monitor from my phone and the app so I can stream it right to my phone right here. But check that out. Honestly, that's not bad. Can you try clapping? For times like this where you really want to just keep it really simple, this is working. So let's throw up the image of what the phone is actually getting transmitted to it. So this is the quality of the image that's being transmitted. This is not the raw footage. You know, yes, you're not seeing every single frame, but it's good enough to frame up your shot, get what you want to see, see the nice pretty sunset. Oh yeah, look at that dynamic range. So is there built-in audio in this? There is built-in audio. There's a built-in microphone on there, which is great for reference. Let's see what you guys are asking on Instagram. Lee says, can you do that cool thing he did at the Emmys? That was dope. I think we did that. I think you saw that with the slow motion, the hair flips. <laughs> that, takes, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, it just takes a bit of practice. Can you teach me the other signature pose? I think you go like, or something yeah, that like that, it. right? That yeah. was it. A7S or Komodo, best value for money. They're on opposite sides going towards the middle where the A7S III is a run and gun with amazing quality and the RED is an amazing quality camera with run and gun capabilities. You know what I mean? They're kind of slowly meeting in the middle between the two. Definitely. Does the autofocus work well enough that you'd use it for a shoot? I think we answered that. I think it would be yes. It doesn't solve all your issues, but if you know how it works, I think you can get usable footage out of it. Most necessary accessory to go with the Komodo. What would you say? That's a tough one because it really depends on what you're trying to shoot and your yeah. style of shooting. Some people might go straight to getting a cage for it to rig it out. Some people might just get some like accessories to make it work on gimbals. This is actually a good question that we have not talked about yet. What file type does it record? So yes, obviously R3D, but it also does ProRes, which we haven't talked about at all. So you do need to reboot to shoot ProRes, and I think some of the main bigger reds shoot it concurrently. This only does either or. But um. the cool thing about when you shoot ProRes and you change the output resolution, it does not crop because it's doing the conversion anyway, so it takes the full sensor and it creates the 2K, 4K, or whatever file size out of it. Yeah, that was something that I really liked about my RED as well, was that if I wanted to just shoot HD or 2K, I shoot in ProRes and I'm still sampling the whole sensor, which was real nice. What is the sensor size? It's Super 35, but it's slightly bigger than Super 35. Let's wrap this up with a few low light shots. I'm curious to see the high ISO performance on this camera, and we'll pretty much call it a day. Dude, Cole, thanks so much for coming Dude, out and hanging out me. with us. It's always cool watching you on the red carpet. Links in description for Cole's Instagram, YouTube channel, all that good stuff. No, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Let's uh, yeah. do some more videos. It's yeah. Great. Should we do some more videos with this guy with the hair flip? More the hair answer flips. is yes. Yeah. Always yes. Always yes.